for course for the visibility of course content we're going to talk about a handful of ways that you can manipulate the way that students see and when they see the content that you're going to deliver to them this can really be a boon especially for students who maybe work faster or slower than others um, you can self-pace the content and the first thing we're going to take a look at to do that are what are called completion rules. Completion rules allow students to access the next activity by completing a prior activity. And teachers set rules for what this completion looks like. So if we take a look at our example over here on the left side, we see weeks three, four, and five. Weeks four and five are unpublished. Week three is available and it says must complete. And it says the time here. So must complete applies to this folder. They must complete this folder un until they go to the next folder. They must complete this folder before they go to the next folder. Within each folder, you can set rules for how students interact and when they can interact with the content that you have sequenced here. So for example, if we look inside for each of these individual items, we see that each item is listed here again, and that we see that in order for this week three lesson one, the students need to make a submission to this assignment before they go to the next one. Students must view this page content before they go to the next one. They must make a submission to this week three assignment before they're allowed to access week three WODs. Once they view this item, then they can now go ahead and take a look and complete this activity. In order to progress beyond this activity, they must score at least a 75 on this. Whether it's an Ed puzzle, maybe it's an assessment of some kind that's listed here, maybe it's a Google form that you have to grade. Um, just be careful with saying you must score a certain piece because students can get stuck behind this because maybe you haven't graded it yet, but they're ready to move on. They can't go on until that score shows in the grade book that they did achieve that score that you specified here. If we take a look even further, if we go in and we edit one of these assignments, or the edit this folder, excuse me, uh, we're gonna see these options here, and we're gonna show you how to do this a little bit later. Uh, this is what it would look like to set up this type of system here. For this assignment, we must make a submission. You can remove them here if you want to. And then we see that for each assignment, there is a criteria that the student needs to meet in order to progress to the next item. And you can add requirements here. So these are student completion rules for creating a self-paced learning environment. You can specify rules at the assignment level, or you can just do it at the folder level. We're, again, we're gonna go over completion rules in another video in a second. But this really allows students um, to decide how they want to access your, your content. And the visibility is changed based on student progress. When we take a look at our next piece of visibility, uh, we can make content visible or not visible by choosing to either publish or unpublish folders and files. And unpublished items are not visible to the student. So that's the delineation there. But we do wanna dig deeper into this over, beyond this overarching definition here. So uh, what we see is we're gonna take a look at uh, weeks four and five. We see that they're unpublished. However, they're unpublished in different ways. And so when we think about having weeks one through nine and we start adding folders in, for weeks three, four, five, six, maybe we're not there yet, we're gonna unpublish them so students can't see them. However, we can schedule when they become published. And we're gonna show you that now. So for week four here, this is gonna be the editing version of week four. In order for week four to be unpublished and published on a certain date, we would go down here to date, specify the date that you want this to start publishing and the time, and then we change availability to publish on start date to, to tell Schoology that on this date, we want you to publish. And it will remain published until you manually unpublish it. We're gonna take a look at another option beyond that in week five, because we're gonna use this end date. What we can also do is we can publish items and we can set a start date and an end date. So let's say that I'm in week one and I, don't, and I wanna create content, I don't want my students to see it until week five, I can specify this folder and all of the content inside is gonna be unpublished until it'll start being published on this date here at this time, and then it will become unpublished again on this date at this time. Under availability, we would change it to publish during date range, which tells Schoology publish it during these date ranges that I have specified here. We're gonna move on to the next item, which is called locking assignments. This is another way that we can front load and sequence content for students and release it to them when we're ready or prohibit them from accessing it again after a certain time. So locking students, students will see the assignment in Schoology, but they will not be able to make a submission on it. They'll get a notification that says this assignment is locked. 
And what that's going to look like from the teacher perspective is if here's my week three assignment. So here's the assignment that I'm going to take a look at right here. We're going to edit this one. And it looks like this. If we scroll down to here, we can toggle on lock. And when we do that, we're given a couple options. We can lock on a certain date. We can lock now or we can unlock. And so what we've chosen is lock on a certain date. So I'm going to choose the end of the semester. This may be something that's useful for you as you're coming to the end of the quarter of the semester. And even though these Schoology courses are accessible to students, you don't want them to be submitting assignments to here, right? That would cause confusion. The students see the assignment, they get to the wrong quarter. Maybe they still think it's open to submit something and they submit an assignment because it's still open. Well, they may think that they're going to get credit for that assignment, but really, in fact, you've moved on. This is a way to tell them, hey, we've moved on at this point so it doesn't confuse the students and allow that access um, when really they shouldn't be having that access to submit an assignment. So we can toggle this on automatically. This is a good habit to get into when you're starting to create assignments so that you don't have to go back at the end of the quarter and then do this for every individual assignment. So as you create the assignment, if you know you're going to lock it on a certain date, you want them to see it, but you don't want them to turn it in, you can lock it on a certain date. And then when this date comes, this assignment will become locked automatically. The last thing we're going to take a look at is disabling digital submissions. So students can see the assignment in this case, uh, but, this, but submitting the assignment by hand or they're going to turn it in in some other non-digital way. So if you do have a digital assignment and you want to turn it off so students can't turn it in, it's similar to locking, but we can't schedule a date for this. It's just an on or off right here. That's the button. If submissions are disabled, it is automatically locked. That's that relationship there. Uh, but this is just another way to do it. Um, you can't schedule it to be disabled at some point. That, that's because you may want to use the locking feature for that. But that's another way to uh, disable access uh, for students when it's appropriate.